So a little bit about the property in like the early 1900s, there was this woman and her name was Alice Hoffman and she came down to Bogue Banks, which is the island that we are on. And she decided that she wanted to buy some land and make a dairy farm on it. So she bought from the edge of Atlantic Beach all the way to Indian Beach and Salter Path. She had about 2,000 acres of land that she maintained and her one condition for this dairy farm of hers is that this ecosystem couldn't be changed at all. So you can imagine with all this forest and stuff that this dairy farm didn't succeed but she still kept the property and when she died she bequeathed the land to her niece which was Eleanor Roosevelt who married Teddy Roosevelt Jr. which is what this natural area is named after and if you guys know the Roosevelt family was really into conservation um, Teddy Roosevelt president um, was really big into the National Parks movement as well and they bequeathed this land to the state in the 70s and that's how we got it when people come to Bogue Banks, they don't really say I'm going to the island, they say that they're going to the beach. Um, so the beach is the most popular habitat on this island. Um, and it is really nice for recreation and stuff, but it is also a really important habitat for a lot of animals like sea turtles and crabs and all of that stuff. So it's really important that we do protect that. But there are also some other really awesome habitats on this island besides the beach. Um, right behind you guys, you can see our maritime forest. And this is one of the few old growth maritime forests left in North Carolina. So that means it's a really old forest. And that is because it has been protected so there can't be any development on it. And that forest is habitat for lots of different animals that you wouldn't think are even on the island. So there are migratory birds back there and there are some that do stay local in the area year round. And then there's also deer. They're a lot smaller than the ones you would see on the mainland, but they are back there. Um, reptiles like snakes, lizards, turtles. And then there are turkeys back there. Um, there are foxes and coyotes and all kinds of fun critters that call that forest home. And that forest also is not only an important habitat, it also helps protect the island from storm surges. So it absorbs the impact from hurricanes and large storms like that. So it not only protects the island, it protects all of these people right here on the mainland too. And then once you get past that maritime forest, we get into this habitat right here, which is the salt marsh. So the salt marsh is probably the most important habitat on this island. Um, it is definitely the most productive that we have on this island too. Um, when people think of productive habitats, they think of tropical rainforests and tropical coral reefs, right? Um, but salt marshes are actually third behind in productivity of those two. So they're the most productive habitat that we have here in North Carolina. Um, and that is because of this grass that you see right here. So that is um, marsh cord grass or Bartina alterniflora. Um, and it is a really good photosynthesizer. It's really kind of tough and stuff, so not a lot of animals eat it when it's alive. But once that grass kind of decays and dies off, it turns into kind of like a peat moss. And then also animals eat that decaying plant material and it's full of lots of carbon. And that just releases a lot of energy into this ecosystem. So those hermit crabs that we saw, a lot of snails. I see some mud snails hanging out around here. And then there's also snails that live on that grass too that will eat off of it, all that decaying plant material. Um, and then those smaller animals attract some larger animals that'll eat them, like some of the fish that we've been seeing jumping around. And it also attracts a lot of animals that we harvest a lot for commercial reasons like the blue crab which is the most productive um, seafood industry here in North Carolina. That industry makes about 30 million dollars each year just on harvesting those crabs 
and you will see them a lot back here usually in the juvenile form we do see some large ones back here but it's mostly the little babies and kind of talking about babies this habitat is also an important nursery for a lot of animals so we'll see a lot of smaller fish back here we've caught some baby flounder some baby grouper and we've also caught baby lobsters back here too so a lot of animals utilize this ecosystem as a nursery area they spend part of their lifetime here and those smaller little babies do attract again larger predatory fish in turn those will attract like stingrays and then even larger predators like sharks and dolphins so we saw some of those today which is really neat um, so they were they come back here to hunt too as well and then also what's really neat about this particular area is that we have healthy seagrass beds too so you guys may have felt them when we were walking out there or just seen them paddling by and those seagrass beds are shelter for a lot of animals we caught pipefish back there they're really neat they're a cousin to the seahorse and they look like little blades of grass and they kind of hang out in there also scallops will hang out in those seagrass beds and then we also do occasionally see a green sea turtle because they primarily eat sea grasses and seaweeds and then we also have enough healthy seagrass beds that we occasionally get manatees towards the end of the summer migrating from Florida just to eat seagrass and then they immediately turn back around and go back to Florida. A lot of animals rely on this habitat. Um, it's really important but it's also important for us. It does provide protection for us. Also we do use it for recreation. We do use it commercially. We do have clams and oysters and scallops in these areas as well and they're filter feeders so if these habitats are polluted then they'll start filtering out and then we can't harvest those animals because they're toxic to us because there's a bunch of poisons in them so it is really important that we are conscientious of our own actions because they do have an effect on things around us making sure that we're not polluting waters or anything is one way to make sure that we're protecting this habitat we're not over developing in these types of areas as well and i think it's really awesome because you can find lots of neat things and it's also really nice to just kind of enjoy the habitat as well